in this video something about how to get inside in a tuning capacitor. When you want to make old school radios, analog radios, you will often see this tuning capacitor. It often has two sets of plates. A, a set with smaller plates, and then I mean uh, not regarding the distance, but the amount of plates and a set with some uh, with more plates. So that means that this part of the cap has a different uh, cap tuning capacitance when we compare it to this part of the cap. So you can tune it here and you surely see that difference. Well, um, the good quality of the, these old tuning capacitors is that they, they are in general not temperature sensitive. Uh, the old Philips tuning caps were made with Invar, a special material that uh, uh, did not have a or had a very low effect on temperature changes. Of course, when such a capacitor gets warm, um, the capacitance can change. Completely logical, because the distance um, uh, of the plates changes anyway. That means, in general, talking about old school analog radios, that you had to tune in a little bit so to the radio station. The difference between these two parts of the same capacitor on that same axis is that one is used for the local oscillator, at least in a superheterodyne radio, and this is a capacitor out of a superheterodyne radio. One is made for the local oscillator and one is made for the antenna coil. It bridges the antenna coil and it bridges the local oscillator. And there must be a difference between the local oscillator and the antenna coil in the order of 450 kilohertz, 450 kilo cycles. And that's why these values differ. There's surely a certain uh, relation. And in the past, and even now, uh, there were used here separate caps. Uh, they were called padders or trimmers to fine tune the, uh, the tuning cap in relation to the intermediate frequency. Anyway, so this is a completely logical how this works. We have a kind of frame here. That frame is in general connected to ground. The oscillator circuit uh, works in general. Uh, making a signal, a radio signal, a sine wave opposite to ground uh, beca because of the so-called hand effect. It must not be made in such a way that when you touch the knob here um, the, frequency the frequency of the local oscillator changes. For the antenna uh, frequency that is not very critical, at least for medium wave, but anyway. So that's one thing, and uh, good quality uh, capacitors have, say, porcelain here, ceramic materials, or of course now in 2024, uh, good quality plastics, etc. etc. So this is porcelain, you can surely see it. It has very, very good properties uh, in high frequency terms. Anyway, that was more or less all about this cap. Uh, the idea of this video is get some insight in a tuning capacitor and this is, say, the capacitors that we can buy still nowadays. Uh, these capacitors are at the moment, at least in the Netherlands, very expensive. But this is, say, uh, a, the typical a tuning cap of such a radio. 
And when you open up that radio, you can surely see it. Let me show it for a moment. So, here in this medium wave radio, we have this tuning cap compared to this old school tuning cap of a tube radio. It is, of course, a transistor radio, uh, but the principles are the same anyway. The idea of the video is and was to show something about how to find out the uh, capacitance of such a capacitor tuning cap. This one and this one. Well, this one is very simple. In general, we have here, say, one pole of the tuning cap and uh, these are normally often two sets of plates. You can look inside and you can see it here. When I turn it, perhaps it's visible that the plates turn. Uh, this is, by the way, um, a tuning cap of a very low value, say in the order of 10 picofarad up to 50 picofarad. But here we have another tuning cap. And my idea is that this cap that I bought must be able to, uh, say, uh, change its capacitance between 0 and 150 picofarad. Perhaps 300, I don't know. Uh, so, well, the drawing again. Say, uh, I want to use this uh, capacitor to be uh, the tuning capacitor for a VLF, very long frequency radio. And of course we know that for VLF we need a quite big uh, tuning cap, just like this, in combination with a coil with a certain inductance, surely higher than 470 microhenry. So, well, uh, the idea is to search here for the um, how much the value is of this tuning capacitor. I use my uh, capacitor tester, the schematic is on my YouTube channel, and here I see the you can see the scales. Um, well, certain positions give, say, a certain setting of the, um, well, of the sensitivity of that uh, uh, measuring circuit. I hope it's visible, but when you find such a capacitor here, like here, here, uh, at first look at the plates. Uh, when you see many plates, you will surely know that it is a capacitor for the, uh, that can give out a high um, a capacitance, say in the order of 500 picofarad. When you only see a few plates here, and that's the case here, and I've tested it before, I have to do it all over again, because I want to be absolutely sure that it works. I have to switch off now uh, for a moment. My solar energy system, it was beeping, the batteries are depleted. Uh, anyway, lead as in batteries. Uh, again here in the middle of the screen, I hope, it's visible. Yes, here. Um, so you have to search in, uh, in this case where the maximum capacitance is between which electrodes. Of course, you can look at the data sheet. That's always, say, the best, the best ID. But experimentally, that can also be done with the help of the capacitor tester. In general, here we see these small pins here. These ones, I hope it's visible. And these are, say, the padders, or the, in general, the trimmers. And, uh, say, the big pieces, the big electrodes, are, in general, give out the 
uh, say the big capacitance change. So they must be connected, they, the long, long wires here, must be connected to the, to the plates. Small wires are connected to small trimmers and these small trimmers are visible here. You can see here that small trimmer, the padder, in fact it's a padder or a trimmer, uh, like it was used in fact in every uh, factory made superheterodyne radio. They, they use trimmers or padders to tune in to the exact uh, intermediate frequency. So uh, you have to search for yourself and perhaps I can show how to do it. Uh, connect the electrodes of the tester to the uh, in an experimental way, that's what I mean, in an experimental way. Sorry for all the movements. Uh, I only have one hand and want to tell many things, too many things perhaps. Uh, connect your uh, tuning cap to the tester and then look on the scale of your look on the scale of your capacitor tester uh, what the capacitance variation is. So I have to turn now of course the knob here. Let's see. Well it's too sloppy by the way but I don't remove this video because everything takes a lot of time to make it. So let me try it again. Now I have focused on the scale of the So you surely see now the meter move. It goes to 20 picofarad. I turn the Well, I wanted to show the differences in capacitance. Well, here you see a little bit how it works. This is only say a test. You can surely see that it now the free, uh, sorry the capacitance moves between 20 picofarad and 50 picofarad. It's a small move, but you know when you look at such a tuning cap that you can switch the plates in parallel so that you have a bigger capacitance variation. Uh, and of course for the radio that I'm trying to make now I need a, the maximum that I can say push out, get out of this um, tuning cap. And I have by purpose, by the way, perhaps interesting to show, mounted two switches and also a rotary switch and with that rotary switch I can parallel the tuning capacitor so that we get to an other capacitance range and that is directly related to other frequencies both for the antenna and for the local oscillator. Thanks for watching. I only have one minute on my camera.